In this episode, I'm going to remove the rear mud guard. Now, the reason for this is rather strange. Is that the indicators, the rear indicators, the glasses at, at the lenses have, have deteriorated and cracked and so on with age. And I couldn't get replacements, so uh, instead of the rather fancy American indicator um, bodies, which I couldn't get, I decided to go with uh, some cheap Chinese versions. But, but the thing is, it was this case with the, uh, the original American ones and the cheap Chinese ones, the, the uh, indicator lights was very, very, very dim. This led into a, a quest on its own to sort out the indicator system. What I'm actually showing here is uh, how I basically stripped down the, the rear mudguard. To get at the bolts, the attachment bolts underneath the rear mudguard, I had to release the rear suspension unit so I could drop the back swinging arm further down so I could actually get in to undo the mounting bolts underneath the rear mudguard. Here I'm, I'm jacking it up to get more clearance so I can actually get underneath the rear mudguard. But, uh, the, the, uh, I wanted to take the rear mud guard off because I wanted to get out the wiring. The wiring is actually rooted through tubes that's welded underneath the mud guard. And uh, I needed to alter the system for an indicated system that I was designing at the time. Because the thing is that I was intending to go over to LEDs for the indicators. And as you might know, uh, a lot of indicator units won't work if they haven't got a big enough load on. And I was worried that the um, this would be the case with this bike. So I designed an elaborate um, indicating system using a microprocessor. But uh, as it panned out in the end, when it, once I got around to actually testing this, this uh, flasher unit on this bike, it was quite happy driving the LED lights. But obviously not direct from 12 volts. But uh, what I really liked about the indicating unit on the, the, this one is it's so easy to forget that you've got your indicators on. On this one, if you leave it running for 18 flashes, it, it self cancels itself. So uh, in the end, I stuck with the commercial. I'm not sure what make it was or fan, but. Um, to be honest, I really like it. It's better than the indicating system on the Harley, which um, in that case it auto cancels. And it auto cancels itself halfway around a roundabout, because in America there's already any roundabouts. E England is, is pickled with roundabouts. So, um, and there's no way, because it's controlled by the BCM, the body control module, that uh, unless you rewire the entire indicated system, there's no, there's no way to get around it. There's no way of, of turning it off, that's what I'm trying to say, no option for turning it off. But at this point the the, the book art's off, you can see that the tubes now, the steel tubes, where the, which is meant for the wiring harness to pass through, now, the reason I had to replace the wiring on is, is because well, it's easier to explain on paper, but basically the hollow tube where the wires went down to the 
the bait itself, the bait unit itself, was only big enough to carry one wire. So that wire obviously had to be a large one in the return where it would be through the metalwork. There lies another problem as well. All current limiting devices normally, because normally if you drive sort of LEDs, then you use a current limiting device. Well, current limiting devices normally use the, the negative or, or the ground of the system. The earth and the lighting system isn't chassis ground. You've got a, usually got the sensing resistor in the return line. Well, I couldn't do that because I could only fit one wire in. So uh, I used voltage regulation instead, which I can go into more detail later. Chinese lights with metric threads and I had a, a motorbike with UN threads. You know. Well, this episode deals with the actual mountains themselves, removing the old mountains, and uh, th that is the original rear light unit. Here I'm removing the uh, the old screw stubs that was they were really firmly stuck in the frame there. They probably have been pretty in luck to it. Now I'm re-threading the, 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 I call it a chassis, chassis arms. This is a case of cleaning out the threads. They've been a bit chewy. And now we need to machine what I've got. What's left of the Chinese stuff. I need to machine that to fit what I want it to do, what I want it to fit. This is a point in question with cheap Chinese, you, you don't get, you get some surprises at times. <laughs> you say, uh, they're not exactly straight, is it? <laughs>
Dat is een, een, een ammer moet zo eruit doen. This is where I'm try trying to cut uh, two different threads on each half of the same tube. It's not the easiest thing to do because the, the uh, threads that's held in the chuck are being uh, deformed to an extent. So it is uh, not the easiest thing to do, it just seemed to be the best solution at the time. Just seeing how far the thread goes in, and I don't want it sticking out the other side, of course. So I uh, need to trim some more up there.
This is uh, basically having, having done several fits, trial fits, and back to the lathe. I'm finally happy with this, and you can see how, how, how they uh, screw into the recess in the frame there. So finally everything's fitting as I wanted it to. And now I'll apply some thread lock to lock this uh, tubular threaded pipe. And now I can actually thread the cables into the rear mudguard. Oh no, I'm not, not let's just say. Yeah, now I need to replace the rear mudguard so I can thread. As you can see, that the, the um, wires are through the metal tubes of the mudguard. So I've got connectors just before at the exit of the uh, cable tubes. And the rest is just carefully putting it back, uh, reassembling it. And finally, this shows the connector back under the under the seat position that supplies the rear indicators. Basically, that's it.